Girl, are you thinking of breaking up with your hairstylist? Ugh. It is so damn awkward, right? What do you do? Do you call them? Do you not call them? What if you want to see another stylist in the same salon? Ooh. Today, we're going to talk about it. But before we do, I want to take a minute to thank today's sponsor, which is GlassesUSA.com. The way that GlassesUSA.com works is it cuts out the middleman and offers over 10,000 prescription glasses and sunglasses, including in-house brands like Muse and Amelia E, which I love. Here is a pair of sunglasses by Muse, and here's a pair of sunglasses by Amelia E. They're both gorgeous, super comfortable, and I get loads of compliments whenever I wear them. This company also carries a designer brands like Ray-Ban, Oakley, and even Gucci at up to 70 percent off retail price. It pays to cut out the middleman. That's all I got to say about that. I think a big part of the reason that people always go into a retailer to buy glasses and sunglasses is because you feel like you need to try them on to see if they suit your face shape or your skin color. But if you're anything like me and you are a busy working mom, you have little kids, or you're just a busy working woman, it can become really difficult to get into the store. For me, having to to wrangle my four-year-old and my seven-year-old to do something as boring to them as trying on glasses is painful. So GlassesUSA.com has made it so relaxing because they have a virtual try-on option and you can see how the glasses actually look on your face with the different colors of frames right in the comfort of your own home. You can take the time to do it leisurely without a kid needing to pee or needing a snack or wanting to leave. If you're one of those girls that are still unsure and you just feel really super overwhelmed by too many options, they even have a quiz you can take which only takes about a minute and suggests the right pair of glasses based on your face shape and your needs. This is a really customized experience that's totally stress-free and on top of it, it's also risk-free. There is free shipping, and returns and there's a 100% money back guarantee within 14 days. Check the link in my bio and I'm also going to leave a link in my pinned comment below if you want to go and check it out for yourself. All right, now that we're looking adorable in our new glasses, back to our content. In my experience, there are three main reasons why people switch stylists. Reason number one is you feel like your stylist isn't listening to you or they won't take the time to do what you want. This can be seen in so many different ways. For example, you are ready for a big color change, but you are repeatedly talked out of it, not educated on it, not given a set of expectations of what may happen, but talked out of it. There is little to no attempt to properly listen and execute what you are wanting, what you are requesting, and feeling like you are unheard or ignored in any realm of your life really is infuriating, let alone when it's someone that you're paying a lot of money to. Reason number two is if you are a long-term client and you are never ever offered change. You get into the salon every six weeks, the color's already pre-mixed for you, she doesn't even ask you about your haircut or if there was something you didn't like about it or if you wanna change something up. It's just done without any consultation. Get in my chair, get out of my chair. I call this the hair factory when you're trying to just rotate through clients, rotate through chairs. The problem with never offering change is that as we age, as we mature, a lot of things start changing. Our hair color starts changing, the texture may start changing, stressors in our life may make styling different in one season of life versus another. And your stylist should really listen and understand what's going on in your life so that they are able to give you a great style that's gonna suit that season of your life. For example, if you've always had really dark brown hair and all of a sudden you start getting a lot of gray and white, that gray and that white is really gonna contrast with your dark brown hair. When you sit in your stylist chair, does she say, you know, is this bothering you every six weeks? Would you be open to doing some highlights to break up the dark? Do you think maybe we should go a little bit ashier in your color so that when the gray comes in, it doesn't contrast so much with a warm brown? All of these changes need to be an option. And oftentimes when you're with a stylist for a long time, you can feel like they are never offering change. Like they're not willing to do any change for you and you can get bored and start seeking advice from someone else. And the third reason a lot of people leave their stylist simply is because 
you are wanting a different artist on the canvas. And this is completely fair and completely legit. Every single hairstylist has different training, has different style, technique, preferences. They do things in a different way because it is very subjective. It's an art form. And so sometimes as people, as women, we just wanna put another artist on the canvas. We just wanna say, I wonder what this person would do. She's really trendy, she's really cool. I love her style. I wonder what she would recommend for me. And again, that's a totally fair and legitimate reason as well. I could go on forever about this topic, and I did. I mean, I made a whole, a whole 10 minute video about it, but how do you go about it in a way that's as polite as possible? The first thing that I wanna say is that before making the switch, if you have a stylist that you have loved for years and years and you have a great relationship with them, a really personal relationship with them, and you just don't understand why your hair is not working out, it's okay to be honest with them and it's also okay to give them a chance first to improve before ducking out. It's okay to say, hey, I don't know why, but I'm feeling like this cut isn't working for me anymore. And I showed you a picture last time of a cut I wanted to try, but I really ended up with kind of the same cut that I always get. Are we able to do something different this time? Being clear and having really clear communication is gonna help your stylist set expectations for what you're looking for and not just resort to the same old same. Stylists are people like everyone else and sometimes I feel like when we're behind the chair, there's an expectation of perfection all the time. And although it is important to leave the things that are going on at home at home, when you're a stylist, it's really hard to separate home life and work life because we're artists and sometimes our problems can come into our work even when we know it absolutely should not. So your stylist may be dealing with something at home that you don't know about. Maybe it's something health related. Maybe it's something to do with her family or her kids or her mom. Something might be happening in her home life that you're not totally aware of and it's impacting her work. So leading with compassion can be a really great way to start a conversation to give her a little bit of a heads up. Sometimes just doing that and giving the stylist an opportunity to talk to you will open things up a lot. The stylist could say, you know what, you're right. You know, it really didn't turn out the way that that photo was. I'm so sorry, last time I was distracted, there's a lot going on at home. Let me try that again for you. Or the stylist could say, yeah, you're right. It didn't turn out as blonde. To be totally honest with you, I specialize a lot more in more natural services. I don't do really high lift blondes, but this stylist in the salon is really good at high lift blondes. Maybe you should see her. I have done that before as a stylist. I've had clients where they weren't happy with my work because my work wasn't the style of work that they want. And I am not or was not very good at doing that style. So I just said, hey, you know what? This is really cool and I think it's gonna suit you, but I'm not the right stylist to give it to you. This person would be though. And that's a great way to transition over to a stylist that they already know and have the expert opinion on that will be able to execute the look you want. You're not upsetting them. You're just going over to another stylist that's going to be able to do the look that you are desiring. Stylists aren't perfect. We all specialize in certain things. We're all better at certain things than other things. And being able to have a conversation and to communicate that will really help you achieve the look that you want in the end. Now say you've given them an opportunity to fix things and given them an opportunity to change what they were doing that wasn't making you happy and it's still not working. It is okay to leave. It is 100% okay to leave. So I'm going to split this up into two scenarios, the long-term client and the short-term client. If you are a long-term client and your stylist calls you to book your follow-up appointment and you've given them an opportunity to change and things aren't changing, it's not working, it's time for you to break up, it's okay to be honest with them on the phone as long as you're being kind. There's a great quotation that says, say what you mean, but don't say it mean. And I think that's so applicable here in so many ways. You can say, hey Jen, I've loved sitting in your chair and I've had 
such a great experience with you over the last five years, but I'm really wanting something a bit different now. So I think I'm gonna try out this stylist for a little bit just to see what kind of ideas she has for me. Your stylist probably feels that you're unhappy because relationships are a two-way road. So she's probably sensing in your appointments that you're not totally happy in the end, even if you think you're hiding it from her. Trust me, if she's intuitive, and most stylists are pretty intuitive, she's feeling that. So she's probably gonna say, no problem, I totally understand that. I'm here for you if you need me in the future. And if she's not, and if she is defensive and upset and annoyed, quite frankly, that's a her problem or a him problem if it's a male stylist, and not a you problem. Never forget the fact that even though you don't wanna hurt someone's feelings, you have a right to enjoy the experience with your stylist, the experience that you're paying a lot of money for. You have a right to have a preference over how your hair is cut and colored. And you have a right to choose who does those services for you. The stylist's feelings, you know, if they feel sad or if they feel upset, that's, that's on them. That's something that they have to work on and have to work towards or have to reframe in their mind. So that's not your responsibility or quite frankly, your problem. If you are a short-term client and you've only seen that stylist a couple of times and you want to switch, the fit isn't right. It doesn't feel right. It's not working out. You don't like your hair. I don't think it's totally necessary, if necessary at all, to call them and let them know that you'll be switching. I think just switching over is going to be fine. If the stylist messages you and says, hey, I loved your last appointment, should we make another one? It's okay for you to say, oh, thank you so much for your message. You know what? I think I'm actually going to end up going with this person because I really feel like we're a better fit. That is totally fair. Again, you're leading with kindness, but I don't think you have to go out of your way to do that if you don't have a strong relationship with the stylist. Now, how do you switch to a different stylist in the same salon? This is tricky. And this can be super, super awkward, but I don't think it has to be. And I think this is largely dependent on the stylist and their personality. I go to a salon called Volume and I have three girls there who I love, Valentina, Rebecca, and Maddie. They are my girls. I love all three of them. They're all totally different stylists. They all execute differently. They all have different vibes and looks to them. And depending on my mood and even on my schedule, I will book accordingly. So the other day I wanted to get a haircut. Rebecca was working. It just happened to be a day that I wasn't working. So I booked with her and she gave me a killer haircut. But then next time I get a balayage, I might book with Maddie because I love the way Maddie does balayage. And next time I want to go super blonde, I might book with Valentina because Valentina is like killer at high lift, a bajillion foil blonding surfaces. And because they're all friends and they all have really cool, easygoing personalities, they don't care at all. I mean, I'll sit in Rebecca's chair and be like, Maddie, girl. And she'll be like, girl, she'll come give me a hug. And then Valentina will say the same, or I'll be in Maddie's chair and Rebecca will be like, oh my God, I love the way you balayaged it, Maddie. You know, it's just, it's a totally chill environment and the girls don't care. My biggest advice with this though, honestly, is to be casual, to be chill and to them with kindness. I definitely wouldn't ignore the stylist because that can make things really tense and awkward. I would definitely say hi and give them a smile and a wave and just ask how they're doing and then move along with your day. I don't think you have to get so into the details of why you switched or why you're trying the stylist or that. The stylist instinctively knows that maybe you weren't happy or it wasn't working out. And I really think most stylists genuinely want clients just to be happy. And if that's in my chair, great. If it's in her chair, great. Whatever the case may be, you just want that person to leave and feel confident and then come back to the salon. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I love talking to you guys on there every week. Again, if you want to check out my glasses or you want to buy some glasses yourself or you want to do a customized quiz and try them on virtually, then check out glassesusa.com. I'm going to leave that in the pinned comment and in the description box below. I'll see you next week. Bye.